Apparently I took a picture. Wait, did I take a picture or did I start the recording? Well, it's kind of down. It has to be recording. We're going to do a whole episode for nothing. Hey everyone, welcome to this new episode of Soy Mary Geek, the show where we invite you into our lives and fun and adventures. We've had a, a really interesting week so far. Um... <laughs> We're going to wrap it up with some more fun. I am Gavin, and this is... So. And Dog is over there asleep. She's been quiet this week. What is that? That's one of their logos. This is twisted. Oh, it looks like... Oh, I see. It's a It's, a it's supposed page. to look like lungs. I got it. I, I thought it was a face hugger from Aliens. Never mind. No. I was off. Okay. Anyways, hi, everyone. So welcome to the show. Um, like I said, we've had a very interesting week. I've had to get a friend of mine on the phone. We've had arguments. We've had fun. We've had a tickle fight. I can't believe we had a big tickle fight on our fucking camera. Um, but today we're going to talk about something that we didn't realize we were missing in our life. Because Phil doesn't leave the house. Yes, I get to work remotely. What is it? Y'all, I am a pretty mellow, laid back, live and let live kind of person. Except when I'm driving. And I have not missed the fucking road rage that I get. I didn't even realize it till I was driving the other day. And I was like, oh my god, it's been so long since I've dealt with road rage. I don't miss this shit. Because y'all... Oh, sorry, I see y'all. Because I'm at home. I'm not road raging. But he's the very polite type of road rager. Like if Ned Flanders was the road rage. No, I mean, I yell and scream in the car. I just don't, like, honk and try to cut somebody off. I do. I don't understand how hard it is to not drive like you're the only person on the road. Like, how hard is it to not be selfish when you're driving and remember that there are hundreds of other people on the road with you who you could kill because you're being fucking stupid? If you are supposed to be somewhere at 9, don't leave your house at 850 Maybe plan accordingly and leave at 8.30. My if, favorite trigger of Phil's is the people who will, you know, the, the turn lane's backed up like a mile. They'll drive and cut it at the very front of the turn lane. It's yeah, my fuck favorite you. fucking trigger. Fuck you. So you're too important and special to wait in line like the rest of causes us Causes more traffic, causes more problems. Especially in our neighborhood, y'all. Our neighborhood, whoever designed it was psychotic and hated human beings. So trying to get in and out of our neighborhood, it's like two lanes, one lane, two lanes, one lane, four lanes, one lane. So people who do that fuck up traffic for the three lanes over because they decide they can't wait in line like the rest of us. They're going to go to the front and cut someone off. And when they do that, that entire lane of traffic is now blocked. Yeah. I also can't stand when people are like, oh, look, I was supposed to exit, or I thought I was supposed to exit, but I'm not. Let me go ahead and cut across three lanes of traffic while other cars are coming and hope I don't kill anybody. Sucks to be everybody else if I do. Why is it everyone else on the road's problem that you don't know where you're going and you don't know how to drive? You know what I do when I miss an exit? I take the next one and I turn around. You know what I do when I realize I'm in an exit lane and I shouldn't be? I exit and then get back on the freeway afterwards. You know what I don't do? I don't put everybody else on the road at risk because I made a mistake. I do. Stop making your problem my problem. Because you know Texas has all these signs all over the place like, hey, look at how many people have died in road accidents this year. You know why? Because assholes like that decide that their problem is everybody else on the road. Yeah, problem. we have signs that indicate areas as high traffic fatality areas. Yeah. You shouldn't have to have that because it would be so much easier and safer for everybody if you just took an extra five seconds to be a courteous driver. But no, everybody wants to pretend they're fucking Vin Diesel and their little fucking Toyota Camry and try to drive 120 to cut somebody off so they can get a whole car length ahead. And so I understand most of this, but I've tried to get them to understand in our neighborhood it has bred this out of desperation because our neighborhood infrastructure is so stupid. There used to be only one way out of the neighborhood. Now there's two. But our main lane goes from one lane to two lanes to one lane to two lanes to one lane. For the stupidest reasons. It breeds desperate people who are just tired of dealing with it because no, the lights are I all don't, off. I don't accept that. Because it's you a, know what I do? 
It's also a high construction vehicle area that are coming from Weberville into town. So you have all these 18 wheelers and dump trucks all the time and with one lane to traffic, it doesn't work right. You've got two different school traffics going on in the morning. It's, you know what I do? It's desperation. When I need to be somewhere early, I leave an extra 30 minutes early. And then he complains for 30 minutes. But you know what I don't do when I do that? I don't make it everybody else's problem. I don't put anybody else at risk because I'm like, oh shit, I'm in a hurry. I plan accordingly, he like a responsible like, driver. He doesn't speed up when there's yellow lights. He very rarely does any of that stuff. I'm the crazy driver, and he's always ghost driving in his seat when he drives with me, and I am a salty motherfucker when it comes to people. I call them the worst things. They are lucky I do not have a weapon-mounted car because their shit would be gone. If this was like fucking, what is it, Twisted Metal, their shit would be on the side of the road because... They are the dumb drivers. And they are so fucking stupid out there. Like he says, let's cut in because we don't want to wait in line. Well, no, bitch, it doesn't work that way because you just cause problems for everybody else. And we do have high traffic fatality zones in town. And they tell you very clearly, these big giant signs, hey, y'all, this is high traffic fatality. It doesn't stop them. Because South Park Meadows in South Austin is the worst of it. That is the, I don't like driving down there. And I'm a pretty fucking good driver. I'm a very aggressive driver. I don't drive down there if I can help it. It is fucking nightmarish because they don't care about red lights. They don't care about lights, period. They don't care about right-of-way traffic. They don't care about pedestrians. Or speed limits. Or speed limits. It is an awful fucking area. William Canyon 35 is another awful fucking area. So people need to learn how to drive. It's not that hard. And you're right. It's not that hard to just be responsible drivers. But they can't help it if they wake up late. And they can't help it if they get so mad they got to wait through five light cycles at 5.30 because the roads are going from two lanes to one lane. They're feeding five lanes of traffic into one lane. If I can do it, they can do it. Stop being selfish on the road and pretending that this is Mad Max and you're the one who needs to get somewhere. Stop pretending there aren't other cars on the road. Drive as though your mother is in the car next to you and you might kill her with your bad behavior. Maybe then people could be a little more courteous and we wouldn't have the traffic issues that we have in town. True. But it will never happen because people it are inherently happen. selfish. When we get self-driving cars, then there will probably not be nearly as much road rage. We won't ever get to that point. You, If you have people who refuse to get a vaccine, do you imagine they're going to give up control of driving their car? You'll never be able to have that because you have to have buy-in from everybody or you'll have assholes who try to cut off the self-driving cars and call Ain't them... Ain't gonna drive my truck with me. Exactly. That is the problem that we're up against. The problem we're up against is people don't understand doing what's right for the whole as opposed to the individual. That lines up with what I said about everybody being so fucking selfish. Whose phone is that? That's my work phone. Oh, I thought we had a random cell phone there. I was like, did somebody come over? Anyways, so driving, it was to, because he had to drive us the other day. Because he had to drop me off at work because we were going to get our boosters after work. And he had to go get some stuff done. And, ooh, he was not happy with people on the road. And I don't like, miss traffic. He doesn't miss it at all. Um, I usually drive us around otherwise. And like I said, he's stamping the brake on his side of the car and, like grasping the door handle. I was like, I can see, you know, we're getting from point A to point B in one piece. What the fuck are you complaining about? Because I'm a very, very safe driver and you are crazy. Yeah, I will speed up and go through the yellow light. I will cut people off. I don't like to speed through the yellow light because I've seen too many people get into accidents because the, when you do that and the light changes and someone else immediately... Like, when the light turns green, I don't immediately hit my accelerator. Yeah, I, don't I wait two to three seconds because of assholes who speed through the yellow. So, my favorite thing to do on the road to cause road rage is when you got those people who are trying to speed and get in front of you, I speed up to a slow car in the other lane and I trap them behind me. I love doing it when there's an 18-wheeler and they get stuck behind the 18-wheeler. I will purposely cause road rage to people around me who are trying to speed around because there's no need to be that way. I will match speed with other people to trap your ass. I just hate it when people do that shit to get one car length ahead of you. or two. It's like, oh, you're two car lengths ahead of me and we're both at the same red light, so what did you really accomplish? 
we're gonna get to the light and it's gonna turn green and we're both gonna get through it at the same time. To them, it's, but it's you a small victory. Drove like an asshole to cut a whole bunch of people off so that you didn't have to wait in line like the rest of us. Because I forgot, you're so goddamn important, you can't wait in line like the rest of us. Uh, yeah, and I, I think I taught Phil a few things about the road because my dad was a professional driver. Lesson number one, never go faster than an 18-wheeler. If you see them speeding, you can speed. If you see them not speeding, there's cops around. Slow down. Talked about that one. Talked about racing curves. I take the racing curves on the back road here. You don't have to slow down very much. And you don't really get the forces of it because you just kind of follow the racing curves. I don't know if you ever realized that's what I was doing, but I was, I've was i been following racing curves my whole life. And two, you're not going to fucking piss me off on the road because I'm going to call you the worst possible fucking things. Oh, I don't care if you can hear me. He's constantly, you can't say that thing. My window's out. I don't give a fuck. Let that Karen come out here and try to start some Let that Ken come out here and try to start some fucking shit. I'll put them in their goddamn place. Yeah, he's the crazy one who likes to fight. I don't like fighting. So what are your rules for the road? Let us know in the comments as we're going to wrap this episode up. It's been a fun week with you guys. We'll be back next week with more So I Married a Geek. New episodes at noon. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're watching. Subscribe, hit that notification button, give us some love, comment. Let us know your thoughts, and you can always get previews for the videos on his Instagram and our TikTok. Just look for Kaiju Labs Media on TikTok. Look for Girl Fight on KLM, KLM on Instagram. Very funny videos. <laughs> our TikTok's full of just random daily videos that I do. Um, sometimes I have to stop our conversation and rewind it and start the video. It's really fucking hilarious. That's why we need cameras everywhere, but we're going to try to fix that. Anyways. Thank you guys for watching this week, you guys. We hope you have enjoyed it. You can tell I'm hungry because my mind is like... Bla, 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 bla. It's kind of flittered away. It's over there watching the chicken spring rolls. Yeah, I've got chicken spring rolls in the oven. I'm so excited! They didn't come with any sauce. I hope we have like some hoisin sauce or something. Do we have hoisin sauce? Probably. We're like, I don't know, bitch. Anyways. Like I have it cataloged in my head. like. Boop, 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 but you can remember being in the fucking womb. But you can't remember what we have in the I've never pantry. said I remember being in the womb. I remember being in my crib. But there's a difference. So we'll see you guys next week. Hope you guys have enjoyed this week. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. Everything you need to do to help this show keep going forward. We appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you more than he does. No, he doesn't know how to appreciate things. I appreciate the dog. No, he does not. No, she gets in my side of the bed. She tries to claim steak, and she just looks at me like, I'm not moving. I said, bitch, you better move, and she moves. Of course, she moves her legs. That's she gives him that quarter centimeter she's 